Good morning, Nana here. Uh, today, I'm going to explain you something about the purchasing accounting, which I have recently learned. <clears throat> it's working perfectly in Nebus, but in the fusion, in the fag end of it, what happens? It's now giving some problems. Uh, rather, I don't know how to set it up, actually. Fine. Please, if uh, you know about it, uh, write to me at uh, nana.app60 at uh, gmail.com. And then also, please subscribe at the bottom. <clears throat> and then uh, what happens? I'll be at most loading one video in a week, whatever I'm learning new. And so what happens? You'll be getting definitely benefited. I have a very vast domain experience of more than 20 years. <clears throat> I'm almost retired now. So what happens? Uh, my experience will reflect on all my uh, trainings, actually. I'm also conducting training. So the next batch is uh, planned for the first week of March, actually. So if you have any requirement of training, also whatever, you can do it. And then it's a very cheap one. And then it is not a very costly one. So you can very well <coughs> attend my training. And then there is no prerequisite required for all these trainings, actually. Okay. Well, now go inside and then we'll now <coughs> start to show me the purchasing accounting. And uh, I made a record on the supply chain accounting. That's working perfectly. But here what happens in the fact end of it, uh, I'm having some issues. So I want your help now. So let me go on then, let me share my screen and then I will now start to explain this part. So once when you know the results, what happens, what you can do is you can write to me, fine. Uh, uh, in the fusion accounting, it is now giving a problem. Uh, and then I'm having more than 30 videos in my <coughs> kitty. <coughs> so do subscribe to this and then what happens, you'll be getting benefited. So some topics may, have, may be of use to you, fine. Not everything, but some of them may be of use to you. So you subscribe and then what happens, I get benefited by this now. <coughs> okay. Let us now begin the activity now. So, uh, when you talk of when you talk of a P2P uh, life cycle, I'm now we are now going to discuss about the purchasing accounting. I normally used to demonstrate with what happens. I will now create an item with a ten dollar US cost, and then I will now create a purchase order at eleven, and then afterwards what happens? I will now make the invoice at thirty. Now. Actually, what happens? It is not allowed. The invoice can, invoice price cannot be more than the PO price, but uh, well, just for demonstration purposes uh, to demonstrate the IPV, I used to do it now. So this has got a full demo there basically, because otherwise what happens, the invoice price will vary based upon what happens your currency fluctuations only and not because of this one. So if a currency fluctuation is there, what happens, the IPP will be hit now. But since I cannot, uh, what happens, the demo, I used to have a $13 <coughs> as an invoice price and then used to demonstrate it now. So, but here, what happens, uh, we are now going to see the five salient areas where what happens, the accounting takes place. As well. So once the material is received in the gate, when you make a PO, no accounting is made in the purchasing. We don't have any accounting at all. And then when you receive in the gate, what happens? These two accounts are getting hit. One is receiving inspection account, and then the contra entry is accrual account. Right? You know, find these two entries getting hit now. And then afterwards, what happens when you go there? And then when you deliver the material into the inventory, what happens? You'll be having the charge account will be coming. Right? Inventory mental value will be hit. And then what happens? The contra entry is receiving. These two gets knocked off. And then the remaining entry are only accrual to charge. And then the PPV will hit only for a standard costing organization. And if it's going to be average costing organization, the PPV will not be hit at all. Right? So after two zones of accounting entries, what happens? The remaining entries are accrual to charge. That is the only remaining one. Afterwards, what happens? You are now going to obtain, we're going to what happens? Obtain the line level distribution by matching. It is a very strict instruction by many companies that what happens? You have to obtain only by what happens? Relieving your thing. Either a PO match or a result match has to be made by which what happens? You're going to relieve the what happens? Accrual. Accrual is getting ready, you know, and then afterwards what happens is this gets knocked off. These two things are getting knocked off. And then the supplier is going to ask for what the IPV will be hit if uh, you're having a, uh, what happens, multi-currency. When you're uh, putting the PO on a different currency, what happens, the IPV will be hit. Otherwise, it will not be hit. And then he's asking for freight, miscellaneous expenses and taxes. And then what happens? In zone three, we now create the real liability. <laughs> In uh, the previous zone, what happens? Uh, we have now in the first zone. We have the accrual account is hit. Accrual is nothing but a notional liability, whereas this is a real liability. Fine. That gets converted to real liability. Fine. So uh, after this, what happens? You'll be having only what the charge account to liability will be the accounting entries which will later to zone three. Now. now we are going to issue a check to him, and then so what happens? The liability gets knocked off, and then what happens? Is the cash clearing will be getting it now. So then after the zone four entries, you'll be having uh, your charge account to cash clearing and then uh, we have a bank reconciliation through cash management and then when you do it the cash clearing gets relieved and then the cash gets it so ultimately what happens the charge account to cash account is a very important one right? what is being charged for which what you're paying right? that is what it is. so uh, everybody will be interested in the charge account right? then the purchasing what happens the charge account is a very big one so we'll now see about how the charge account can be hit now the charge account can be hit in six many ways now. The charge account in a purchase order can be can be in there six many ways. So we'll now go on and have a look at it now. And how the charge account is getting hit now on the purchasing now. And go there. So we'll now have a look at it now. 
<clears throat> so this is an example of an asset and expense item right so if you open up the inventory and go there let me go there and open up <clears throat> and go there good items master items so i'm not getting an item so once you get an item what happens you go there and then uh, there are 16 tab bridges as far as item attributes are concerned <clears throat> that has been reduced to seven as far as efficiency is concerned if you go to the inventory and then what happens if inventory is on this is the gateway attribute what happens this becomes you you become eligible for doing an activity in the inventory in the gateway attribute i mean all right now and then it goes to go to the costing if the inventory asset value is on then this is known as an asset item but now i am unable to enable it because what happens the gateway is not on fine i will not let me enable the gateway and then of course what happens you cannot enable it. if these two attributes are on the inventory item is on and then the costing inventory asset value is on the item is known as an asset item fine inventory item and then the item is known as an asset item. And then when you're, tra when you're transacting it as sub inventory, which quantity tracked as well as assets sub inventory, you know how I look at it now. Right? We're going to have a day. Right? We'll go and have a look at the sub inventory now. Right? Here, we'll now go to switch responsibility to inventory now. So, inventory, we're going to have a look at it now. So, here, yes, oh, yes, is a navigation entry. And then here, we're going inside for M1R. And then here, control F1. You can now see everything is coming. <clears throat> So in this place, what happens if you go there? If it is a quantity tracked and then asset sub inventory is enabled, then what happens in the asset sub inventory? For example, the depot is an asset sub inventory. There is consigned win, which is used for consigned inventory. I'm now working about the vision demo instance. So quantity tracked is that asset sub inventory is off means what is an expense sub inventory. This is an expense sub inventory. So these two attributes decide whether the sub inventory is an asset or expense. So when you transact an asset item into a quantity tracked asset sub inventory, the transaction is known as asset into asset. And then all the raw materials, sub assemblies and goods, go finished goods will know will know what happens of come under this category actually. Now, uh, for the demonstration purposes, what happens uh, when you perform an asset into asset? What happens? Uh, we have in organization parameters an account. So I already taken out one fine. Now go and see this account now. Go there, close it. And here, go to the setup organization parameters. And then here you can now see this now. In the costing area, we'll be having a middle account. <clears throat> this account will be the charge account. This account will be the charge account when you perform an asset into asset account. As it comes along. And then stores is an asset sub inventory. The asset sub inventory is also going to have an expense account. Fine. Let, me have, let me have a look at it now. Fine. So, this is one. so in Fusion, what they have done is everything has been pushed into costing. Costing is a separate module. So all the accounts are being set over there only. Fine. All the accounts are set over here now. Apart from that, what happens? You go on and set up over here now in the other accounts. You see what happens? The IPV is set over here, the accrual is set over here. Fine. These two accounts are the purchase price variance also set over here. So as far as the procure to pay life cycle is concerned, the IPV and then the accrual are important. And they are set in a different place basically. They are now set in a different place. Fine, close it. So here what happens is we do the setups in uh, fusion in a different place for the IPV as well as accrual along with you. Go on and show it to you there. So this is what else. But here, if you see in this place, this is the one which will be the charge account for this now. The charge account is this now fine for an asset into asset sub inventory. I will not show you the sub inventory expense account, but that will not come as a PO charge account. PO charge account will not be there. No, mind. no mind. have a look at it now. You will not see the sub inventory expense account over here. Now. Go there. Yes, oh, yes, is a navigation entry. <clears throat> and then I will not query for the sub inventory account. Go there, control from one. If you see the sub inventory stores, you know, go down. So, stores uh, account, I am going to have a look at it now. <clears throat> uh, so, too much of this. Let me query it now. Stores, I'm querying it now. And if you query it, what happens? You know, see, the stores will be having an expense account. You go, 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 go. Yep. What happens? They'll be having an expense account. So this is expense account. So I have taken the expense account 7527530. And this will never be the charge account. You ask long as it is an asset and asset subject. So the material account in the organization parameter will become the asset account. This was case number one now. So the first case, there are six cases are there. Right? Oh, the first case, second case, what happens? They are now going to have. If you are transacting into an expense sub inventory where asset sub inventory is off now, this is an expense sub inventory. So here, the example is what the asset item is kerosene, and then issued to a maintenance sub inventory. So this is called asset into an expense sub inventory. So here, what happens for maintenance purposes? You are issuing it out, so it gets expensed out, and so what happens? Such a transaction is known as asset into expense. So we have the R parameter. The expense sub inventory is there. It will be having on expense account. Now go on and have a look at it now. Why? Let us go on and query it now. Expense <coughs> sub inventory. So expense sub inventory will be having an expense account that I have taken 0, 3, 5, 20 ending in 110. That is the one. So that becomes a charge account. So when you transact asset into expense, the expense and expense sub inventory is expense account. That becomes a charge account. That is case number two. In case number three, what happens? Item itself is an expense item. 
the inventory asset value is off, is an expense item. And then here, what happens? They go there. And then when you transact it into an asset sub inventory, the asset sub inventory we have already seen what is the expense account. This is the one. So that becomes a charge account. Right? But item is also having one expense account. Right? Item is also having an expense account. Let's go and see the item's expense account. Now. I close it now. You go there, go to the items, and then go to the org items because it's the org control parameter as far as this item is concerned. Fine, go there. So M10 percentage, EX percentage is like tab. Expense item, I'm going to query now. I keep on fine now. And now querying on the org item parameter. So there, what happens? You go there and then have a look at the purchasing. So it will be having an account now. So this is the account I have taken now. 0 to 520, 7530, 260. So if you don't put any sub inventory, this account will now become a charge account. The moment you put a sub inventory, the sub inventory's account will become the charge account. That is case number two. And then if you're putting an expense sub inventory, the expense sub inventory's account will become a charge account. So let us now first of all make a check of all the four scenarios now. And then afterwards we'll now go for the remaining two now. So so the accounts have been shown over here now in the orders, and then we'll now make a check of this in the purchasing. Let us now go on and make a purchase order. Switch response related to purchasing, and then let us now make a purchase order. <coughs> go there, and then the purchase order is now getting made now. M10 percentage, and then give it up. <coughs> You're making it now. I go there, click on it. So M10 percentage. I'll now put the asset item over here now. The asset item. I'm putting it. So let's go for 100 quantities now. I go to the shipments all time. The shipments I go there. So in a, what happens in a shipment? We have to give all the four informations. That is our location and then the quantity and dates are mandatory. And go there after that. Go to the distribution. In the distribution, what happens? I'm going to put the sub inventory as stores. I give it a tap. Entering stores is sub inventory. Which I'm going to put it. And then if you commit it, the charge account will be coming over. You know, and the charge account is what? The sub inventory expense account will not come, but organization fine. organization parameter middle account will be the charge account. I go there. And then let's commit. So we now see the charge account will be 01000 which we are taken up from this place now. So case number one is not done. So we'll now go for the second case. If you put the expense sub inventory, we'll now make a change to the expense sub inventory. Expense sub inventory, we are going to make it now. The moment I commit it, what happens? You can now see the expense sub inventory is expense account will now become the charge account. And go there and commit. And let's commit. So, so 03 520 7530 110 is the account. So second case is also remote. We'll now go for the third case where what happens will be having an expense item as such. And go there. Close it now. We'll now add one more item on this now. Go down. <clears throat> Click on it. I'm going to add one more item. I am 10 percentage. And then expense item I'm going to add now. So here what happens? The asset value, inventory asset value is removed. Actually, I have not shown that actually. This is not remote. It's 200 quantities. You go there. And then go to the shipments. And then let me give the promise date. Fine. So for a shipment, what happens? Or location quantity and dates are mandatory. You go to the distribution, and then I'm not giving any sub inventory at all. If you don't give any sub inventory for an expense item, the expense items the expense account will become the charge account. Zero two ending in two sixty five. Go there, commit. Calculus commit. You commit it. What happens? The expense sub inventory is expense account will now become the charge account. <coughs> you see that is now becoming the charge account. Zero two five twenty, and then ending in two sixty. So expense sub inventory. Now, the moment you put the asset sub inventory, the asset sub inventory is expense account will now become the charge account. I go there. I'll now put the asset sub inventory. So the asset sub inventory is expense account will now become the charge account. It's 70, 520, 7530. So that has become the charge account. So if you don't put any sub inventory, items expense account is charge account. Now, if you put an expense sub inventory, we'll now see what happens. We put expense sub inventory <coughs> and then commit. So expense sub inventory is expense account will now become a charge account. 03110. It is now 0310. This is how the charge account generator module has been set as a default. This is the defaults. But if the customer says that what happens, no, no, no. Uh, if item is there, I do not want the sub inventory expense account. Items expense account also always should come. Fine. Irrespective of whatever sub inventories I'm transacting it. Then what happens? The financial team will now modify the charge account. The, the charge account generator module. In uh, Fusion, what happens? Uh, we have a similar model called TAP, Transaction Accounting Builder. So the transaction accounting builder will be modified with the financials based upon the requirement of the end client. So in fact, what happens, uh, this charge account uh, population, uh, will they will have more than a week's time of a discussion and then finally they will not drive it. So uh, if you know how to do the charge account generator or infusion, the transaction accounting builder, you can even know but how to make a change. Now we are, okay, we are only talking about the defaults which have been set there. But what happens if you know that module, you can even uh, do the change. And then what happens, you can even see that items expense account will always be charge account irrespective of the sub inventory. Right? Likewise, also I can make it. So we are now discussed about the four different cases. Now there are two more cases right? where what happens, you'll be having a service item. So if it is a service item, like what happens, uh, welding, special cutting, AMC, etc. 
can be logically received into a service memory to facilitate payment to the service provider. So, you make a receipt and then what happens? You make a service provider. So, the service item, what happens? The purchase officer's expense account will now become the charge account. You can close it now. You know, however, we can close it. We will not switch responsibility to HR members now. We will not go to the HR members. And then from there, what happens? We will not, <coughs> will not go then query fine. Switch responsibility to HR members now. In HR members, let me query the employee's expense account. The purchase officer's expense account will now become the charge account. So we are going to query this now. Fine. Stock mispat is the purchase officer as far as vision is concerned now. So I will now put stock percentage pat percentage we tab. And then let me query it now. So what happens? We now go to the assignment area. So click on the assignment button. There we will now go to the assignment. Fine. Click on assignments. And there we can now see that employees, this is this, a purchase officer. His purchase officer's expense account will be saved. Fine. Go there and drop it down. And then go to the purchase order information now. Click on purchase order information. And this is the charge account now. Fine. Go there. The charge account and cancel it. So I'll not take a copy of it now. Fine. This is zero one. So let me put in a notepad. So that what happens? Again, I'm going to verify this now. Fine. Go there. So if you're going to be a service item, what happens? This becomes a charge account. Fine. Zero one one zero seven six nine nine. And this is a charge account. So let us close it now. And then there is one more thing. There is a sixth one. is called what happens? A category level over, right? So let me, I, I might have already said it. Let me remove it now. First of all, and then afterwards I'll not create it. So we'll now go and then see the category level over right now. And go there. <clears throat> so you'll now go to what? Uh, setups. And then go to financials. And then go to accounting. Fine. Go to accounting. And then here we have expense account rules. So this is applicable only for service items. Right? Whenever you're having a service item, what happens is applicable. Apart from that, it's not applicable now. Setup financials, accounting, expense account rules. Fine. Double click on it now. So we're going to see this now. <clears throat> go there. So I might have already created something. It'll be delete really everything. And then afterwards. Sixth case, I will now freshly demonstrate to you. Let me delete all this things now. I delete it. So I have made two such things. Let me delete it now. And this is a big one in many companies now. Fine. If they're buying cement, what happens? It has to go on account and sand and then jelly. Like what happens? You know, one of the building uh, construction company we have implemented it. Uh, we even have around 600 entries over here. <clears throat> that much of variance they want actually. I go there, delete it now. So it's not done. <clears throat> So now, what happens? They go there, go to the navigation, and this is in the navigation setup, financials, accounting, expense account rules, which what happens? Again, have a category level over it. So now we go there, and then go to the purchase order, and then let us now create what happens? A service item. Now. Fine, they go there. So M10 is the one supply. If I give a tap, and then go there, and then here type, I'm going to make a change you now, not goods. It's not going to be a service based one. Fine, service based. So I will now go to the fixed prices and services. It's a service based one now. Fixed prices and services. I'm now going to do it. Fine. Click on OK. The service based one fine. Go there. Category is important here. So it is basically category based purchasing. Misc, misc. I'm giving it now. Fine. Go there. So I will not say it's AMC contract. AMC contract. And then I will not give a date of promising. Fine. Go there. And then afterwards, what happens? I will not go there. And then I will not give a save now. Fine. The account, the amount, I am not putting this in. Go there. And then here, what happens? I will not go there. Everything is not given. Fine. The charge account is coming here or not? Fine. It's not coming. Huh? Fine. Go there. So in the lines region, you don't see whether the charge account is shown or not. Oh, yeah. Charge account is here. So the moment I commit it, fine, this is a service based item. The employee's expense account, this account, 01110 will become the charge account. Fine, go there. Commit it, continuous commit. So we're going to have a look at it now. Fine. You know, here itself, we can now see the charge account now. Fine. 01110, which is nothing but the employee's account now. Fine, this account. Now, what happens? This is the fifth case. On the sixth case, what happens is they would like to have a category level over it. If the category is going to be misc misc, if the category is going to be misc misc, what happens? I would like to have a variation now. Right? The first segment and the second segment, they would like to have a variation. It should be not 0, 01, it should be 0, 02, and then it is not 110, and then some other value 140. Plus. So let us go and see the category level over right now. So this is a navigation where what happens? You have now gone there. Fine. You can now see this navigation. <clears throat> you go to the window and then go to the navigate now. Fine. The expense account rules, set up financials, accounting. Expense account rules. So that navigation is available over here now. Fine, go there. And then let me create it and click on create now. This category level override is applicable only for categories and nothing else. Now. Fine, no other thing. It'll fine, go there. It'll only for item category. Fine, no other things. You don't have any other option. Fine, go there. Accounting value rule. I will not say it's misc, 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 misc. Fine, go there. Give it up. And then the segment, I'm going to drop it down. I will not choose the company segment and I will not find out. So it's initially 01. I'm not going to make a override of 02 actually. So we'll go there. Let me override to zero. Fine, go. And then let me override to zero two. <coughs> so zero two, I'm overriding. And go there. Click on select. 
and then click on apply now right you know apply it right? click on apply so by which this is now applied so we have one uh, uh, the first department you can even override on all the segments actually fine i will not create one more thing and then show it to you right? click on create and then i will now say value is misc misc give it a and then segment we drop it down and then choose the department now and then the segment value i will now choose it was initially 110 there so let me what i was uh, make it to some other thing let's say uh, 140 i'm going to make it so click on apply so if the category on your purchase order is going to be misc misc what happens uh, the first segment is now going to change to 02 and then the second segment is going to be 140 so let us go on and make a check of it now fine so we'll go there and then we'll now make a check of it and now the purchase order will be there fine go there we'll now go for the uh, second line now fine click on it and now go for it now fine go there <coughs> i will now to again fix prices services go there and then i will now shift f5 I will now copy the previous field now and go there. I will now say AMC one <coughs> and something like that. Go there. I will now give a promise date shift F5 and then go further, go further. <coughs> and then here I will now give an amount of twenty dollars. The moment I save it, you cannot see that what happens. It will be having the overriding values now. Fine, give a save. I give a control S commit. So the moment I commit it, what happens? You cannot see the category level overriding, which is good. Go further. <coughs> what happens? You cannot see the first segment has got overridden to zero two. The second segment has gone to one forty. So these are the six ways of populating a charge account. <clears throat> now let us now jump into fusion and then see this one. Right? These are the six ways of populating it now. So for the fusion, what I have did is I have now generated, I have now created so many accounts here. Now fine, is a thousand is an asset, one thousand one is a liability, and then one thousand two is an expense, and then one thousand four is a one as equity. Fine, we need these minimum accounts for demonstrating a PO. Fine. So I don't need it. Apart from that, for dem demonstrating the charge account basis, what happens? I have now made 1,004 to 1,008 as an expense account, and then 1,009 to 1,011 as an asset account, and then what happens? I have created one more liability account. <clears throat> so here in the, in the EBIS, what happens? We have one uh, what's called uh, if you go there and then see this down this place. If you switch responsibility inventory, we have two types of liability now. Fine. One is what happens? Asset liability, and then one is an expense liability. Fine. Go there. If you go to this place, if you go to set up organization parameters, then have a look at it now. For M and R, you'll now see go there <clears throat> in the other accounts. What happens? We have what happens on uh, uh, EPV is there inventory accrual accrual. Sorry, is it an asset accrual and then one expense accrual? Asset accrual is this amount and then what happens? There? We have an expense accrual defined on purchasing options now. Right? This is an asset accrual which is there the org level now. Right? Go there the org level and then afterwards what happens? We have an expense accrual available now. Right? So it's responsible to you. <clears throat> And then here, we we'll now go to the setups, organization, and then go to the purchasing options. You see, if you go and then have a look at the purchasing options now. In the purchasing options, we have an expense accrual being defined now. So to simulate that, what happens? You can now see the bar. You have an expense accrual. So expense accruals are normally accrued at period in action. Only at the end, we are going to accrue it. And then asset asset are perpetual now. Asset items are always perpetual. That means what? As and when the transactions are made, it gets accrued. So expense items, since what happens, they are not going to contribute to your what happens, your manufacturing cost. So we accrue it at the end, month end, and then what happens, they give it to the management. So we will have a different expense accrual, and then we have a different asset accrual. Also. Accrual has got two things. So that is why what happens, I have now created what happens, two accruals. This is for uh, the liability account. Uh, accrual is always the liability account. So I created one for the asset, and then one for the expense. One to one zero one two is an expense. So now let us know. I have created two such supplementaries for you now. Fine. What is the EM one? Is an asset supplementary, and then one is an expense supplementary. Now I'll now show you what how I have set up now. Fine. <clears throat> the setup I'm going to show it to you. But as far as accounting is concerned now, so there is a what's called a separate one. We'll now go there and then log in now and then show it to you. Fine. Go there. <clears throat> so let me close this now. And then I will now log in into what happens Fusion now. I'm now working on a release twelve instance actually. <clears throat> Go there, and then let me show it now. <clears throat> so we are bringing in fine. Go there. It's EM10. I am now logging into the system now. So once then I log in, what happens? We have one managed mapping set available on regular this thing. Fine. Go there. So in this place, what I will do is I will go there. Click on it, and then go to the setup and maintenance area. Click on your name, and then go to the setup and maintenance, and then from there, what happens? I am going to go to The managed mapping set. So we have to go via projects now. Fine. There are multiple navigations available here through functional setup manager. Also, you can go. Fine. Uh, people, I am now habituated to doing like this. I'm doing it, but you can even go via multiple navigations. And open the project, and then there, what happens? I'm going to go for manage percentage, map percentage, set percentage. Fine. Managed mapping set is the one. I go there, and then we have to go via cost accounting. Fine. 
there is one thing the receipt accounting this is for the supply chain uh, accounting which you can see in the next video i will de demonstrate this now so for the cost accounting what happens i click on the manage mapping set i go inside now and the cost accounting manufacturing cost accounting right manufacturing cost accounting and then there what happens i go on the query for the manage mapping set my numbers so here what happens the scope selection is what cost management so keep it and then what happens you go inside now i click on the inside then the go to the task now my manage mapping set task so the first account which i am going to demonstrate is what middle account for the sub inventory now i go there so i will now drop down the search there are plenty of accounts are there hundreds and thousands of accounts are there fine material i'm going to make a check now in the material what happens the sub inventory is a, is a top most priority middle account the sub inventory fine click on it and then here middle account sub inventory i'm going to show it to you <clears throat> fine go there and then the bottom what happens you can now see this now one second here what happens for my chart of accounts for my chart of accounts inside what we will be having this now and the one the middle account sub inventory so for my chart of accounts m10 coa i have given two accounts now for the asset sub inventory i have given 1009 now you go and see 1009 for the asset sub inventory because we have now given 1009 as an asset sub inventory, asset account i have now given the asset sub inventory and then for the expense sub inventory i have given an expense account of 1004 so 1004 to 1009 or 1004 to 1008 are expense accounts basically. So uh, this is what is. And then I have given for the expense supplementary this one. And asset supplementary 1009 I have given. For the expense supplementary this 1001 for this one. You can also see this one. For the, so the expense supplementary 1004 has been given. So this is the supplementary level. I go there, cancel it. And then I will now show you to the org level now. Fine, go there, click on it. So supplementary. This will not only default. And this is only default. And then uh, what happens? If you go and then see at the middle account organization level. So in the middle of the organization level, so here at the middle of the organization level. So let me go and then see my chart of accounts over here now. So here for my chart of accounts of M10, if you go down and then have a look at it now. Right here what happens, I have now given this as account, a charge account, and this is a default, I have said it's a default. And so what happens for all the inventory orgs, this will be the account. 110 will be the account. So if these two are absent, then only what happens, it will come. If sub inventory is absent, then only it will pick up from the org as a charge account now. So this is for asset into asset or expense it will come. So when you transact asset into asset, what happens? 1009 will be coming. When you transact asset into expense, 1004 has to come now. And then if these two are absent, then the org account will now come over here. So this is the asset one. Fine. For the expense, we'll now have this one. Fine. We'll now have the expense into asset now. Fine. So we'll now go to expense account for the sub inventory. Now go there and have a look at it now. Fine. Close it. So this is now completed. Fine. Cancel it. So we'll now have a look at the expense account the sub inventory level. <clears throat> Click on yes now. Will now go to the expense account and submit to the Make a search for it now. Fine, go there. Click on it. I will now make a search for expense now. Expense is the entry now. Fine, we will make a search for the expense now. So, expense account to submit to level is the highest probability. Fine, click on it. Priority number one now. I will now go there. And then I will now show it to you our chart of accounts now. Fine, and this one, I will now show you our chart of accounts now. Fine. So, here for my chart of accounts, I have given two such values. Fine, one for the asset sub inventory is 1004. So when you transact expense into an asset, 1004 will be defaulted onto your requisitions of purchase orders. And then when you transact expense into an expense sub inventory, 1005 will come. Right? There's an expense sub inventory. If you go and then have a look at it now, the expense sub inventory 1005 will come. So I configure it. And then if these two are absent, then what happens? It will not pick up from the org level. Now. Expense account of the org level it is going to pick up now. Fine, there is 1006 now. Fine, go there. So let us now go and then have a look at it now. And cancel it. So expense account of the org level, I'm going to make a check of it. And click on the expense account organization. And then here, I have given the org level, <coughs> go down. And then have a look at my, what happens to the chart of accounts now, find the M10. So here at the org level, I have given 1006 now. If I go down, you can see this now, it's 1006. So if these two things are absent, then what happens, this will fire actually as a charge account. And then I have given ex employees expense account as 1007 now. So I'll go there and see this now, fine. Go there, close it now. So cancel it. I will not show you, but how to see the ex employees expense account. Fine, click on done and then come out of it now. But then we'll now go there. Go to the navigator now. And click on the navigator now. <clears throat> and then there. You go there. And then you go to the workforce and then person management. My workforce person management in which what happens. I'm going to query my employee. Employee has to be queried with the last name, comma, first name. That should be the way. Last name, comma, first name. That is the way you have to query it now. <clears throat> go there. And then I will now query for the one. Is EMP1, comma, space, M10, underscore. Fine. Last name is EMP1. So and then the first name is M10. Fine. Click on search now. The last name, comma, first name, comma, space, first name will be coming. Fine, click on it. And then here I will now show you the employee's expense account over here. So I'm now in the person management. I'm querying the employee. I'm going inside. And then I will now show you the expense account as well. 1007. Now. Fine, go down, go down, go down. So 
So the bottom one of the you see this one is one thousand seven. Default expense order is one thousand seven. So this will come for the service item action. Fine, go there. This will be coming. And then here, what happens in uh, Fusion? You have one more uh, facility that what happens if you can even have a user preferred account set up now that will now supersede this one thousand seven. If you set up as one thousand two, your one thousand two is also an expense account over here. You know, one thousand two is also an expense account. So if I set this user preferred account, what happens? This will now supersede this one thousand seven. And this will only be the charge account and not this one thousand one at all. Right. So this much we have set up now. So let us now go and then experiment on this on a on a, on a requisition side. You know, go and then experiment on the requisition. And go there. So let us now create a requisition and then experiment all these things. Now find go there. So click on this home icon and then you go to the procurement and then go to the requisition page. So and go there. Go there. Click on yes now. You come out of it and then you click on the home icon and then go to go to the procurement now. Go to the procurement, and then I go to the purchase requisitions. Purchase requisition. We are now going to set up all the things. Now, eight such tests we are going to make now. <clears throat> so we are going to go and then begin our first test now. <clears throat> so in this place, what happens? I know opening a requisition form in which first of all the thing is you have to set up the preference now. Fine, click on edit now. I will now set up the preference now. Fine, the preference. What happens? I will now say this is an asset submitted. Fine. We are now going to transact into asset submitted. Asset into an asset is the first one. So I go there. I will now change the submitted asset. Fine, click on seven close now. And I don't understand the meaning of this now. Fine, there's a thing which is now become mandatory actually. Fine. So this is not there in EBS at all. Fine. We have to set up the preferences first of all, and then afterwards go into the requisition line entry as you know. Fine. Click on the requisition line entry. Now I'll now put an asset item over here, and then transact into asset submitted. Fine. Go there. Item is asset. Fine. Yep. Ten. <clears throat> I'll now go there. I will now put an item one as an asset item. Go there. It's now coming. Fine. Let the ten quantities over here. Fine. Let that. <clears throat> go there. Uh, and then go there. And then down and fine. Go there. It's one thousand four is coming. Fine. One thousand four is an asset account. Fine. Go there. So the first two cases now, what happens is not coming. No, it is actually one thousand nine has to come now, but it is not showing as one thousand four. Uh, it is it is not a correct one. So once when you go into the requisition, it will not go and then show it properly. It is not showing as one thousand four. So what you do is you go and then click on add to requisition now. Fine. Click on add to requisition. You go to add to requisition, and then there you can see it correctly now. Click on return submit. That is you can now see it correctly. <clears throat> Click on return submit. And then here, what happens? You can now see this is one thousand nine. Fine, one thousand nine is the one. So first case is not tested. We have to go to the requisition and make a check of it. Now we will now make a transfer to expense submitted. Here itself, I will not try to make it now. Fine, you go there, make a change to expense submitted. It has to become one thousand four. Now you go there, make a change to expense submitted. Fine, the submitted is an expense. And then go and then save it now. And click on save now. So once when you save it, what happens? It has to become an expense submitted. It should become one thousand four. Fine. So submitted, you know, it will become expense one thousand four. So these two cases are not tested now. Fine. Now we'll now go for the one. If these two are absent, then what happens? One thousand ten defined the organization parameter, the the, the uh, metal account org will now come in. Fine. So let me put an end date for these two accounts, and now can see we'll now see this. Now. The third case we are going to test now. Fine. Go there. So it's what us. <clears throat> you go down. And then uh, go to shop, and then I will now open up one more tab region now. Fine, go there. So let me open up one more tab region, and then set up this account now. Fine, go there. <coughs> Here I will now set up. I will now put an end date for the submitted levels. Now, go there. Click on it now. <coughs> I will now go to what happens? You go to the setup and maintenance, and then I go to the project now. Fine, via project we will do it now. Otherwise, scope selection will not be possible. But if you have a different method, please follow that now. Fine, doesn't matter. I go there. I will now, it. I now open up this now, and then here I will now go for the manage mapping set now. Manage percentage, map percentage, set percentage entry now. I go to the manage mapping set, and then go via cost accounting and not result accounting. That two via manufacturing. Manufacturing has about two entries: one for the cost accounting, one for the result accounting. So manufacturing cost accounting had to go or fine. Click on the manage mapping sets, and then here we go there. Go inside now. Fine. Go to the manage mapping set. There's a cost management. Fine. The scope is already selected, and then go to the task now directly. So the task I will now end up everything. Fine. Go there. I will now go to sub inventory level. Fine. It is called material account sub inventory. Metal account submitted. Let me put an end date for this. Now. Fine. You go there. Metal account submitted. Let me put an end date for both the things. Now. Fine. Let's see. Metal account submitted. Fine. Go there. So in the bottom, I will now have to choose first of all now, my my this thing now. <coughs> go down. And the metal account submitted. We have to choose this now once again. <coughs> now for my chart of accounts, what happens? I am going to put an end date for these two things. Now. Fine. One not nine and one not four. I am putting effective end date now. Fine. Go there. Let me put an end date. So let me put some a uh, few days before now. Here also, what happens? I now put a few days before. So sometimes what happens? If you put today's date, it will be working till today. I know that. I know that. So one thousand nine and one thousand four have been put in date. If these two are indented, then it will not pick up from the R level. It 
you know, because of the log level. 110 will be the charge account, whether you transact the asset into an asset sub inventory or expense sub inventory, because at the org level, it is not going to pick up. Right? 110 will be the charge account. And go there, this is not my uh, end date. And then let me save and close now. I click on save and close, by which is now end dated now. And go there. Now I'll now go there and then create a purchase requisition over here now. Trying to go there in this place, whatever. I'll now create a purchase requisition for an asset itself. I'm going to make it now. Fine, click on this requisition line entry. So 104 and 109 will not come, but 110 will not come. M10. Then I'll now put an item over here now. So here, everything is now there. Fine. I'll now go for some quantities. Fine. All quantities make you a tap. So 110 has to come now, fine, because they are indeed now. So here itself, sometimes it will also is not showing you properly. Right? If it is not showing, what happens? You go into the requisition area, and then there it will not show perfectly. And charge account is one time because what happens? We are now indicated these two things. So since we ended it, it is now picking up from the org level. Right? It is not testing. Now we will now go to the expense area. Now. So this is asset into an asset sub inventory, asset into an expense sub inventory, and then if these two are indicated or if there is no entry at all, it will now pick up from what happens? The material account at the org level. And org level it will pick up. So for the asset, we are not testing everything. Now we will now go to the expense. Now. We'll not go to the expense now. So we'll not test up the expense now. Expense. So out of eight cases, we have not tested three cases. We'll not go for the expense item test now. So expense it on asset supplementary. So 1004 has to come now. Fine, go there. And then I'll now go down. Go back. Fine, go there. Return return shopping. And then I'm returning back to shopping. And then here, what happens? I'm going to go there. First, what happens? I'll now make a change of the preference now. Fine. It is uh, strongly recommended by the financial team because they only do the accounting. And then they say that what happens? You change the preference and then go. It's better to find go there and now make a change to expense supplementary. Change this to expense supplementary. Click on save and close now. Fine. By default, what happens? We are now going to bring it in the reserve. Click on save and close now. You know that. Now we go to the purchase requisition. Then let me put an expense item over here now. Click on this now. EM10. <clears throat> I will now put an expense item over here now. Expense item is now put over here now. Fine. Go there. That is what else. And then here, what happens? You go there. And then the supplementary is an expense supplementary. It is not defaulted from the purpose. It is not fine. Go down and then see the charge account now. It is not showing. It is 1005 now. So here, what happens? It should be uh, expense sub inventory. And expense sub inventory is 1005 is very correct. If you go do the expense item in an asset sub inventory, it has to go and show as 1004 and go there. So this is not showing correctly. So let me make a change to asset sub inventory and go there. Let me make a change to asset sub inventory and go there and see. So it has to become what? 1004 now. <clears throat> it's not becoming. Fine. Asset sub inventory is 1004. It has to become now. The expense account is not having. So what I will do is I will now go and then add to the requisition. Now. Fine. So before which the previous one, I will not delete it now. Let me delete it and then act to requisition now. So inside, what happens? I'm going to make a check. I click on edit and submit. So inside, I'm going to make a check. Inside, it will not show properly and go there. So here, if you go on and see, it's now 1005. The sub inventory itself is absent. Fine. This should not come like that now. Fine. It has to come properly. So what I do is I don't make a change there now. Fine. I will not change inside only. Fine. That's the thing. It is not showing you some problem here. When you try to make a change outside, what happens? It's not coming properly. So go to the requisition line entry and then I will now make a change inside now. And go there. Item is M10. Fine. M10 expense item. I'm going to put it now. An expense item putting it now. So leave alone the defaults as such now. Fine. The default is expense up inventory. Fine. Leave it as such now. It's not showing 1005. But well, it's not okay. Fine. Expense into expense up is not showing. So I will not add it to the requisition. Then inside I will not make a change. Now. Fine. Go there. So click on add to requisition. Fine. Read it. And then afterwards I will not click on add to requisition. And then inside I will not make a change. Now. Fine. Click on edit and submit. So go there. And then here. Drop it on oh god, this is not coming as such now. Fine, this should come actually <clears throat> after two three iterations. I got it now. Actually, I don't know why that is happening now. Now, the sub inventory is coming now. Fine. If you put the asset sub inventory, what happens? You can now see expense item it on asset sub inventory. Item is what expense item, item is an expense item, and then expense item it on asset sub inventory 1004 is coming here. What you can now see expense item and asset sub inventory one over, and then if you make a change to expense sub inventory, it will now become 1005. The preference itself, I said, asset as such. You know, fine, go there. Uh, if you make a change to expense up in order, it has to become 1005. Give a save now and go there and then give a save. And click on save now. So the moment I save it, what happens? It will now become this now. 1006. So uh, 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 sub in order, what happens? It has now become what? Uh, it now become 1005. For an expense sub in order, it is now 1005. For an asset sub in order, it is 1004. And again, see, make a change now. Fine. And I'll make a change to asset sub in order. Fine. And then save it has to become 1004 now. And give a save now. It has to become 1004. So, okay, fine. This, this case are just now. What happens? I'm going to what happens? I'm put an end date for these two things. It will now pick up from the ARG's expense account. Expense of you know, expense item into an asset subject or expense of it will now pick up from the ARG the value of 1006. So, let us go there and then do it now. Fine. So, we'll now go there. Click on that. And then, middle account sub inventory. Fine. Uh, it's not a middle account. I have to go for the expense of Expense account. 
let me query expense now. When you query expense ability, we have at the subunit level, org level, and then item level also. In item level, that will be the ultimate, I think, probably. So we have to put an item and then do it as a lab access for you to try to make it under the table. I will now go to the expense subunitary, expense account subunitary. Let me put an end date for these two entries now. So there I am going to put an end date now. Fine. I will now choose the M101 and then let me put an end date. And select it and then go down. And then let me put an end date now. And then go there. So let me put an end date now. <coughs> so 23. And that is what I want. I'm going to get data. Go there. 23. So what happens? These two things are four and five are now done. So once when four and five are done, what happens? You not pick up from the org level expense account. The org level is one thousand six. That will be coming as a charge account. Go there. Go to this place. Save and close now. Well done. Now we'll go there and then shopping. I'll go to the purchase requisition and then go back. This place. What happens? You make a charge. Fine. Give a shop now. Go, to the, go back to shopping area and then do the shopping now. <coughs> So click on the requisition line entry and then here whatever I'm going to make a charge. I will now pop probably the M10 item. M10 expense item. I'm going to choose it now. Okay. And then let me remove this now. This one. And then I'll now add the requisition. <coughs> and then click on edit and submit. So if you go there, now what happens? An expense item into an expense sub unit. If I drop it down. Well, again, it is not coming. So this has to come. Now, after two, three iterations only, it is coming. I don't know why it's uh, behaving like this. Now, that you have to understand it now. So let me go on and try again now. So here, uh, what happens when I uh, indicate the submit level, it has to pick up from org level, but it is not picking the org level. It is not picking only the employee's expense account as your what happens account actually, charge account now. I don't know why it's so. But I read it like this only. It has to pick up only from the org level, but it is not picking. I don't know. I don't know why it's so. I'm just make around. This is one thing which is I'm not able to. I'm not able to understand it now. I go there. So here, if you go and then see this now, uh, uh, is one thousand someone is now coming. Fine. Whether you put the subunit as an expense or an asset, now Fine. go there. Make a change, you know. So employees account is only coming. I click on save. Employees expense account is only coming as 1,000 charge account. So this I'm unable to. I'm, I have. I don't have a clarity on this one. This is one thing problem. Now we'll now go for the seventh case now. My seventh case is what? When you go for an expense item, uh, service items, what happens? It will be employees account will be coming. There is a seventh case. We go there and see this now. So we'll now go to the shop and then click on the requisition line entry. We'll now go for a fixed prices service. Drop it down. We'll now go for a fixed price services. So it will be a description based one. Fine. It is uh, the description is uh, the AMC contract. AMC contract. And then here category. It is a basically category. I will not put one others categories there. Fine. I will not put one others others categories there. So let me put it now. Go there and then have a look at it. So it's one thousand seven will be coming as a charge account. The charge account is coming as one thousand seven. The employees expense. But if you want, you can even override it now. Fine, this place, what happens, you can even override it. So we can override with what happens, your user preferences now. This is only applicable only for our expense account, expense items. So we can now do the override of this now and go there. So we'll now go to the shop, Fine. go to the return to shopping. <clears throat> and then here, what happens, I'm not going to do it now. And go there. So click on what happens in the user preferences, I'm going to give a charge account now. And click on edit now. So here I will now add now Nana's charge account. I will now put it now. And I will now put 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1002. I am going to put it now. There is also an expense account. And go there. I will now add. So once when you have a charge account available here, that will now supersede this one. If you go to the requisition line, 1007 will not come. Go there. I will now make it as what? Fixed prices services. This is applicable only for this now. Right. Go there. I will give something. I will give it a half. Categories, others now. So let me go to others category. Amount is something. And then go down and see. Now 1002 will be the charge amount. So this will now supersede only for an expense item and not for the asset items. For asset item, what happens? It will be coming only from the mapping set now. I'll show you. So this supersedes the 1007 and then 1002 comes over here now. So this will now come. If you have a user preference account, only for the expense, uh, what happens? The service based items, what happens? It will be superseding now. And go there. And then click on it. <clears throat> and then if you go for a what happens an asset item, fine, go there goods, I'm going to go for it. And then it's the M10. <coughs> I will not put an asset item over here now. Item one is an asset item. So I will not choose it now. So when you choose it account, what happens? You go down and then do it now. 
<clears throat> no, what happens? The charge account will be coming only from your what happens your uh, existing account. Fine, this is not because what happens now subunit level you already disabled it. So what happens from the arg level it is not coming up. Fine. So since these two are disabled, it's not coming from the arg level. So only for the expense items, what happens? We have what happens only for the service based items. We can even have a user preference which will now override this now. Now let us go to the purchase order and then see it now. Fine, go there. So we'll now make a check of the purchase order. So I have already given what happens one expense accrual here. Fine, I will not show you. Fine, click on done and then come out of it now. The expense accrual has been shown now. Fine. I will not show you the expense accrual now. Fine. This place I will not show you an expense accrual. <clears throat> Uh, I will now go there and then I will now manage mapping sets and then I will now make a change to purchasing now. Change it to purchasing and then click on apply and go to task. And then here you can see expense accrual at the business unit level. Fine. You click on it. Expense accrual I have set it up as 1012. So if there is an expense item, what happens? It will be going over there now. So in the M10, if you go and see, and go there. I have set up this as well, 1012. So the expense accrual is 1012. Now let us go there and then have a look at it now. Fine, go there, go to this place. And then go to the purchase orders now. We will now create what happens an expense item now. Fine, go there. Purchase order for an expense item. I'm going to create now. Fine, go there. Click on it now. Okay, connection to the server is lost. <clears throat> go there and then now create the order. Anything written order. So it's the M10 supplier. I'm putting it now. I'm putting a sub one. Fine. Click on OK now. And then click on create. And then let me put an expense item over here and the purchase order. Go down. And then now we have a plus. Now. Let me put an expense item over here. Now. Item is M10 expense item. I remember both the sub are already, uh, what happens, disabled now. So I will now put expense item over here now. I will now go for 100 quantities on this now. And then now I will now go to the what's called distributions now. I, go there. I will now go to the schedules and then give a date now. We need to have a your date now. So go there. So let me say I need it today because it's a must now. And then afterwards I go to the distributions and then select and then it now. The accounting distribution I'm going to see. So here, whatever nothing is coming, let me generate the accounts. Fine, go there. So go to actions and then go to rebuild the accounts. I'm going to rebuild the accounts now. When you rebuild the accounts, whatever you will see, whatever the variance is coming, the charge account is coming, is again coming only from the employee's expense account and not your whatever the organization level expense account it is not coming. What is the employee's expense account is coming? Fine. <clears throat> no other. So you go there. And then uh, uh, the accrual account has to be 1012. I don't know why it's not coming. Accrual has to be 1012 because it's an expense item actually. It's not coming. Accrual is not coming as 1012. It has to come now, fine, properly. And come okay. That is also another problem. <clears throat> I've set it up. But sometimes it comes. I have seen it now. Fine. Now we'll go for the service item. Now, fine. Click on plus now. We will not go for the service item. Uh, the destination is uh, the only active distribution for this one. It's not giving you a warning now. Let us now validate it also. Fine. We can even validate it. Go to actions and then go to validate. It will be validating whether the accounts are okay or not. So the document must have at least one line. What happened? Must have at least one line. Oh God. It got deleted, I think, probably. By mistake, I have deleted the thing, probably. So I have done it. I have not saved it, actually. I So go there. So click on now. I will now go for a fixed prices services. Drop it down. And then I will now go for a fixed prices services now. Fixed prices services, I'm choosing it now. It's a description based now. <clears throat> go there. I will now say it's AMC contract. And the category, I'm going to put it now. I will now put OTHERS, others, I'm putting it now. Or let me choose some other category now. Go there, drop it down, and then choose some other category. Click on search. Okay, we have to go for advanced and then make a search now. Click on advanced. And then it starts with, fine, it is not blank. And then it is not blank. And then go there, it is not blank. I make it now. I click on search now. <clears throat> so here, I will now choose some category. No, uh, computer, laptop, or something like that. And go there. And I click on OK now. So it's a category level purchase, which I'm making it now. And go there. Prices are now saying 12 now. And then go to the schedules and then give a date now. 
So click on it. <coughs> and then I'll give a date when I need a date. <coughs> now I will not give a save. So go there, I will not give a save now. I'll click on save now. So I'm saving it. <coughs> now you can see the variance account and charge account are not getting populated from employees expense account. They're not coming at all. The charge account and variance account are not coming from employees expense account. Okay. Is not coming. <clears throat> I don't know why. This is another reason which I'm I'm struck actually. So here it is asking me to manually make an entry now. I go there. It is now asking me to make manual entry. I go there. Go to the distributions now. And select it and then click on edit now. So here I can put the charge account. Let's say 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1002. I'm going to put it now and then give a tab. The variance account also becomes one on the the charge account becomes invariably variance account. That is correct because what happens it is a basically expense based purchase. Everything will be hitting the variance actually. But now you see the accrual has come proper. Only for this what happens the accrual is now one thousand two hundred. Only for a service based item it is now coming, but not for the expense item actually. Fine. Expense accrual is not coming, but service based accrual is now one thousand one hundred two. If you give it OK, if you give what happens click on OK, you can now see what happens. There is no the variance also will be coming now. I go there. I will again go and then edit it now. I go there. I will now go and edit it. I click on it and then edit now. So here, what happens? You can now see the variance also is one thousand two, but it is not populating from the employee's expense account of one thousand seven. So for a service based item, whereas in requisition is coming properly here, it is not coming. I'm now I have to manually populate it now. The variance is coming. Fine. It, since it is a service item, the entire thing will be a variance account, and then the accrual is coming. Whereas for a, what happens for you are uh, this thing, <coughs> what's called for our expense item, uh, what happens the accrual is not hitting one one zero one two. When I put an expense item, expense accrual is not coming as one zero one two. It is only coming as one zero zero one now. Fine. That is the that is the other thing which I am unable to understand. So rather there may be some places where what happens I'm not assuming a proper one now. So in this place, uh, what is not happening is that what happens if you see if these two are absent, I have to get it from org level one thousand six now. I have seen it sometimes, but uh, what happens uh, many times it's not coming. It is not picking only the employees expense account. That is one problem. And then uh, what happens uh, your <coughs> service based purchases the purchase orders. What happens uh, the account is not automatically defaulting. So I don't know where exactly to set up. Fine, there are some problems. Or that I make a mistake. Fine, if any of you find out why, where exactly I make a mistake, please let me know so that I will also learn now. And then I do subscribe the bottom. What happens? I'll be making a lot of uh, what happens video. One the more once in a week, I'm planning to make one video so that what happens? You'll be getting educated, and then uh, you will be become knowledgeable also. Fine, I'll not share my experience basically, and then my new learnings also will be sharing. Fine. So I hope that what happens this session is interesting for you. And then uh, what happens? My supply chain accounting is perfectly working. Fine. Do watch the second video, and that is working perfectly. Fine. There, what happens? Uh, we are going to account for all the things. Fine. So on the supply chain front, and the cost accounting actually, that is working perfectly. That is, this is giving some nakara in the last time. Fine. So if you know, please let me know. And then uh, uh, what happens? You can even uh, what happens? You can even send a, what happens? A message to me. Now, once again, I'm not showing you my this thing. Now. Fine. You can uh, what happens? Inform me over here now. Fine. This is mail ID. Uh, where exactly I'm making a mistake, and then if you're able to correct me, I'll be be it because what happens? I'll be helping all the students right now. And then I have what happens? Uh, more than 30 videos uploaded, and then I'm now starting one more batch on Fusion Fine from 5th of March from 9 p.m. to 8 p.m. Fine. If you want, you can even uh, send a mail to me. I will now enroll you for that batch. Basically, it'll be in depth. And then the price is just 3k, fine, 3000. So it's very cheap actually. So you will be definitely be benefited. So do subscribe in the bottom or here itself what happens will be having a subscribe button and just subscribe it. You'll be getting a lot of uh, what happens videos from you. Thank you and then bye and then see you on the next one. Fine. See. <clears throat>